Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Having a solid grasp of masking tools is an essential to get outstanding edits no matter what raw editor you use. If you're an On One user, On One has some of the most powerful masking tools in raw editing and can be used to handle any type of masking problem. On the negative side, On One's multitude of choices and settings brings about unnecessary confusion and dissuades beginners from even trying to learn the tools. So in this video, I'm going to help clear up the confusion by counting down the five best masking tools in On One Photo Raw 2024. We are going to discuss not just how to use each tool, but also when to use each tool. I'll also be talking about each tool's positives and negatives. So let's get right into it. At number five is the line mask. The line mask tool lets you create masks by drawing straight lines in your image. To start, create a local adjustment layer. Next, click and drag along the outline of the area you wish to mask. Clicking the mouse button adds a point to the line. You can continue to click along the edges of your desired selection and the tool will add points along the way. These tools will be represented by a small square. When you are finished, hover your cursor over the first point and click on it to close the path created by the tool. This will close the selection and change the cursor to a paint bucket icon. Click inside the area and Photo Raw will create and display the mask. So what are the pros and cons of the line mask? With regards to pros, you have full manual control over the accuracy of the mask since the placements of the points are up to you. How about the cons? As you might have guessed, placing individual points one by one takes a lot of effort and the line mask is more time consuming than other masking tools. As such, the line mask is best to use in situations like this where edges are not clear and alternative tools like the masking brush fail. So that is the line mask at number five. Let's move on to number four. At number four is the gradient mask. The gradient mask goes from dark to light in tone, applying more of the adjustment where the gradient is lighter and less of the adjustment where the gradient's tone is dark. The most common use of gradient masks is to darken the sky in an image while preserving the brightness of the foreground, similar to using a physical graduated filter on a camera lens. To apply a gradient mask, as in the line mask, first create a local adjustment layer. Next, click in the image roughly where you wish the gradient to go. You'll see the outline of the gradient, which is called a bug. You can use the handles on the bug to move your gradient around, increase or decrease the length of the gradient, or rotate it. What are the pros and cons of the gradient mask? With regards to pros, the gradient mask, specifically the linear gradient, is an essential tool for landscape shots as it is the easiest way to balance tones in high contrast scenes where there is an overbright sky and overly dark foreground. In terms of cons, the gradient mask is limited in scope. It is not suitable for masking specific objects like a specific person. It is best to be used when the target takes up the entire width of the image. So that is the gradient mask at number four. Let's move on to number three. At number three is Quick Mask. For those who don't know, this tool used to be called Quick Mask AI in the older version of On One. The name was changed when the new point and click AI mask came out in On One 2023. They named that point and click tool Quick Mask AI and denoted this tool to just Quick Mask without AI. 
a very strange naming choice since this tool also uses AI and isn't it very confusing to have two tools named Quick Mask? That history aside, the Quick Mask creates high quality masks with just a few strokes. To use it, you paint areas you want to keep in green and areas you want to drop in red. Then using artificial intelligence, and it does use artificial intelligence, PhotoRAW analyzes the color, tone, and texture of the marked regions to learn what you want to make out and then automatically find the edges and create the mask for you. This is a very flexible tool and can be used to retouch skies or mask specific objects. What are the pros and cons of the Quick Mask? In terms of pros, compared to the Quick Mask AI tool, which is very inflexible since all the masks have been pre-created based on the objects detected on the scene, Quick Mask is flexible, meaning you can increase mask quality by adding more strokes to help the AI understand what should and shouldn't be included in the mask. What about cons? In many situations, Quick Mask can be a lot more time consuming than Quick Mask AI or even the brush as you will need to paint multiple strokes for even the simplest object. For example here, as I try to mask the car, I would need to scribble not just on the car but throughout the entire image. That being said, Quick Mask is a unique tool not found in any other raw editor and one I enjoy using. So that is Quick Mask at number three. Let's move on to number two. At number two is the masking brush. The masking brush lets you retouch parts of the image by simply painting with your mouse. In terms of pros, the masking brush allows for precise masks to be created through its perfect brush edge detection technology. In addition, it is the tool used to correct errors and refine masks generated by other masking tools. It is also the most versatile, allowing for precise masking of objects large and small, whether it is as large as a sky or as tiny as a strand of hair. A masking brush can be used. In terms of cons, masking brush has a lot of settings, which if not properly set, will make the brush oversensitive and unresponsive. I discuss all of these issues in my masking brush tips video. Do check that out if you have not. Another con of using the masking brush is it can be more tedious and time consuming compared to AI tools, which allow for one click mask creation, as we're going to see in a moment. So that is the masking brush at number two, and that brings us to number one. At number one is Super Select AI slash Quick Mask AI. While it may appear that these two are separate tools as each was given a different name, in reality, Super Select and Quick Mask AI are the same tool. As you can see here, each one creates exactly the same mask as the other. The difference boils down to workflow. With Super Select, you have the following workflow. You select Super Select from the tool well. Next, you move your cursor over the photo. As you move around the photo, Photo Raw will display the various regions in your photo as red overlays. Clicking on a region will create a selection and change the overlay for that area from red to blue. If there are additional regions you wish to select, hover over the new area and click. When you have completed your selection, right click and choose an option from the pop-up menu. After choosing your option, ON1 will create a new adjustment layer for you automatically. So that was Super Select AI's workflow. How about Quick Mask AI? Quick Mask AI also works in the same way, but with a different order. After selecting the Quick Mask AI tool, you create the adjustment layer first, then make the selection by pointing and clicking. 
In a nutshell, that's the difference, a different order. As a side note, I believe this is a case where Onuan's UI implementation is a reverse of the ideal. Onuan gives two distinct tools which function differently, Quick Mask and Quick Mask AI, the same name, while giving two identical tools which operate in the same way, Super Select AI and Quick Mask AI, two different names. Let me know in the comments what you think about Onuan's naming of these. So what are the pros of Super Select AI? As you probably would have guessed, the main pro is it is ridiculously easy to use and takes the least time to make a precise mask. Whereas other tools require multiple mouse clicks or brush strokes, all Super Select and Quick Mask AI requires is a single click. That workflow is hard to beat. How about disadvantages? Well, as you might have noticed, the Super Select AI and Quick Mask AI is not perfectly accurate. You will more often than not need the masking brush to fix errors, which adds extra time to the masking workflow. How nice it would be if the mask was perfect from the get-go. Also, if an object does not fall into a well-defined category, like person, foliage, or sky, etc., then Super Select will fail as it is based on automatic object detection and you have to rely on other methods for masking. So there you have it, the top five masking tools of On One Photo Raw 2024. I hope you found this video helpful. As you have seen, On One Photo Raw masking is comprehensive, powerful, and easy to use. I have more to say about each individual tool, but I'll reserve that for future videos, so do watch out for that. Which one is your favorite masking tool? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.